As head of science, I had to steer the department through two major changes. The first one was bringing the two schools together to make one, and the second was the implementation of the national curriculum. As you can imagine, there were many lively departmental meetings. The younger members were very enthusiastic about the changes. The older members of staff were a little bit unhappy about having to change the content of the lessons. All were a little apprehensive about having to introduce new practical skills, as all of them had got to teach all three sciences now, and not just their specialism. I will begin by using Checkpoint Science 1, although you can use any of the other books in the series as they all follow the same format. I will begin with the introduction and go through all of it with the department at one time. The introduction begins with the general aims of the curriculum framework and these should be borne in mind while you are developing the science course. It then moves on to provide information about Bloom's taxonomy and how you can frame your own questions to test critical thinking. This is followed by an explanation of the rationale behind the yellow sections in the students' books which show science as a human activity. The introduction moves on to discuss photocopyable sheets about planning lessons and recording investigations. The lesson planner can be photocopied for making lesson plans for your own records and for use with your laboratory technicians. There are three photocopyable sheets that can be used by students to learn about the thoughts and activities that go into making an investigation. Once this step-by-step -step approach has been mastered or revised, the students and the teacher can use the photocopyable sheets about scientific inquiry to record progress. After looking at the photocopyables, I would return to the introduction and work through the notes about features of the chapters, such as answers and activities. Then look at notes about the practice test and the glossary, which are featured at the back of each book. Every chapter in the teacher's resource book supports a corresponding chapter in the student's book. For example, chapter 8 in the student's book is supported by chapter 8 in the teacher's book. This support begins with the summary of the chapter in the student's book to show the teacher how the content of the chapter develops as the student progresses through it. There follows a chapter notes section which provides some background information which teachers teaching outside their specialism may find useful. The section on terminology aims to support the development of a scientific vocabulary. The table on the curriculum framework shows the learning objectives which are addressed in the chapter. In the answers section, each answer is matched to a question in the student's book, and there is a page reference to the student's book where the question occurs. After the answer section is a table of lesson ideas. This offers suggestions on how the chapter in the student's book can be divided up into a series of lessons and identifies activities from the following sections to build into them. In the activities section, each practical activity is cross-referenced to the student's book to help link up book work and practical work. Each activity begins with a short introduction, followed by preparation notes and safety information. If the activity, such as Activity 7.2, has a worksheet, there is a page reference to it in the teacher's resource book. So here we move to page 68 to find the worksheet that goes with the activity. Each chapter ends with a list of homework activities which are also linked to the lesson ideas table. The content of the resource book, especially the activities sections, can be used with some flexibility to match your timetable demands and your resources that are available. By working with the student's book and the teacher's resources book, I believe a scheme of work can be mapped out to provide you with a Checkpoint Science course for your school.